it's time for RTB 101, where we discuss practical questions to equip you to share your faith more effectively. And here to help me talk about an important component of our testable creation model is astronomer Dr. Hugh Ross. Welcome back, Hugh. Well, thank you. Glad, glad to have you here. Now, I understand, I'm not a physicist, but I understand that one of the basic assumptions of physics is that the laws of physics are the same at all times and all places throughout the universe. But I also understand that not all Christians agree on this point. So why is that? Well, there's this young earth, cold earth debate, and all young earth creation models, at least all the ones I've seen, critically depend on radically changed laws of physics, either at the fall of Adam or at the flood or both, in order to sustain uh, their view that the earth and the universe are less than 10,000 years old. So if I were to talk to a friend who's not a Christian, but they're knowledgeable about science, they're going to probably believe that the laws of physics are the same everywhere. And they're probably going to have a hard time with the claim that the laws of physics changed at the fall of Adam. Is that correct? That's correct, because all of our observations testify that the laws of physics haven't changed. I mean, you really wouldn't be able to do science research if you thought that there was no stability to the laws of physics. I mean, why bother? In fact, you see that in some of the other religions of the world, if you go back a few centuries, where they basically didn't have a motive to study science because they said, you know, what's the point? Uh, we can't trust what we look at. So that makes me think that that's going to be an obstacle that I'm going to set up if, if I hold to that view, if I'm trying to do outreach and, and talk to somebody who's, who's not a Christian. Have, have you seen that play out? Well, especially because we astronomers can measure the laws of physics all the way back to 13 billion years ago, and we can measure those laws of physics throughout the entire extent of the universe, and all of our measurements tell us the laws of physics are rigidly constant. In fact, they're constant to about 16 places a decimal or more. Uh, moreover, I would argue from a Christian's perspective, you're having an issue because repeatedly the Bible tells us that the laws of physics have not changed. Well, yeah, let's get into that a little bit because um, there is this, this, this difference among some Christians. So from your point of view, what does the Bible have to say about this issue or, or anything? Does it say that the laws of, chain, the laws of physics changed? Well, you've got uh, Ecclesiastes and Romans both referring to uh, this pervasive law of decay, what we physicists call the second law of thermodynamics, and repeatedly makes the statement that this law has always been in effect. Uh, Romans 8, uh, 18 to 22, uh, states that explicitly the entire universe is subject to this pervasive law of decay. And then you've got Jeremiah 33, uh, where God compares his immutability uh, to the stability of the laws of physics. He basically says to the Jews, you change your mind all the time, but I'm a God who does not change. As evidence, look at the laws that govern the heavens and the earth. As they never change, I never change. That's interesting. So if I'm wondering, do you see this idea of the, the constancy of the laws of physics actually as providing maybe a positive evidence for the reliability of the Bible. Yes, uh, because the Bible made these statements of the constancy of physics uh, more than two millennia ago, and only in this past century have we had the capability of making measurements to see if what the Bible stated thousands of years ago actually was correct. And now we do have the measurements that say yes. Uh, as far back in time as we can measure, as far away as we can see, the physics is exactly the same as what we measure in the lab today. The Bible got it right. And it's one piece of evidence that the Bible has predictive power, the power to predict uh, future scientific discoveries, and always without error. Now, what would you say to Christians who might be concerned that you're really kind of maybe reading too much into the text. I, I, cause I know you and, and I know that you don't believe the Bible is a science textbook, but, but how might you respond to, you know what, Hugh, 
I don't know. I, I don't know if I, if you're, if maybe you're reading too much into the text there. Well, of course, not all the Bible deals with scientific issues, but uh, you do have dozens of long texts in the Bible that deal with creation and science. But here's the counsel. You want to read all those texts. Don't just cherry pick a verse here or there. And so you want to go through the entire uh, content of the Bible where it addresses creation and science, and you see this consistent message. The laws of physics do not change and will not change until God eradicates evil once and for all. And that's obviously a future event. So when we're talking to our non-Christian friends, you don't see any inherent conflict between believing in the constancy of the laws of physics and scripture. And actually that could maybe even be a positive case that we could put forward to our, to our non-Christian friends about the reliability of the Bible. Yeah, a lot of non-Christians are surprised to discover that the Bible teaches that God reveals himself without error through two books, the book of nature and the book of scripture. So the Bible itself repeatedly exhorts us to study the book of nature in order to learn about the truth of the realm of nature, but also about God and his attributes. And so we would anticipate from a Christian worldview perspective, both books will be completely coherent. So let me ask you this, Hugh. Um, how well established is this idea that the, the laws of physics have been constant throughout the universe and throughout its history? Is that pretty well studied or, or maybe give us some, some insight into that? You'll actually find several hundred research papers because scientists are eager to put this to the test. And many are hoping that when we measure, say, to the 20th place of the decimal, we're going to discover a new law of physics that we didn't realize was there. So yes, the scientific community does believe that the laws of physics are constant. Our measurements prove it, literally to 16 to 18 place of the decimal. But the reason why they keep putting this to such a rigorous test and want to go to the 19th and 20th place of the decimal, they're wondering if there's a law of physics we've overlooked because we've not been doing this kind of research to sufficient depth. Well, thanks, Hugh. This has really been a fascinating conversation, and I want to encourage people. This uh, discussion was based on an article that Hugh posted on his blog. You can go check that out. Just go to reasons.org and search for Today's New Reason to Believe. 